Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Richard Holder. This is part two of our Gen 7 8.1 liter big block. We've already run it naturally aspirated. We've already tried a couple of different headers. So the only thing left is to try some boost. In this video, our 8.1 liter big block Chevy, the Gen 7 version, finally gets some boost. We're gonna take a look at boost pressure. We're gonna take a look at back pressure, but the test was not without a problem. Let's take a look. Now it's time to take a look at what happened with our 8.1 liter once we added boost. If you haven't, please take a look at the first video where we ran the 8.1 liter. We're going to just do a brief review here. What we did was test it with a variety of different headers, but this was our 8.1. It is a 496 inch motor. It's a 4250 bore and a 4370 stroke. It's an uh, LS big block kind of hybrid, and it's designed for you know heavy towing applications. As such, it makes obviously a ton of torque here. Has a long cross runner intake manifold. It has obviously lots of displacement. It has mild cam timing. It has um, cylinder heads that look an awful like like a Cathedral Port LS. It also shares the LS firing order and a 24X crank trigger. We ran this combination with an LS harness and a Holly HP management system. And we started off, I just wanted to show you real quick what the NA combination is, because I like to run the NA motor before we start adding boost to it. So we ran the NA motor. This is with the stock exhaust manifolds feeding two and a half inch exhaust sections with no mufflers, but just long, long extensions for the exhaust. So run in this manner, the NA uh, 8.1 liter, produced 412 horsepower and 545 foot pounds. Here's what happened when we added a set of long tube dyno headers to it. It did pick up a little bit of power. Peak power jumped up to 424 horsepower and peak torque was up to 554 foot pounds of torque. So it responded a little bit to the headers, not a lot given the mild cam timing and basically stock trim. This thing was run with a Mazir electric water pump. Conventional big block Chevy stuff does bolt right up to this uh, Gen 7 big block. But here's what happened when we added a single turbo setup. You can see really big power gains on the turbo setup. This is run run with a peak of 6.2 pounds of boost. The boost varied from 5.6 on the load in basically up to 6.2 pounds. Run with 6.2 pounds on E85. The turbo setup that we ran was a Summit Racing S475. It was a T6 turbo, so a big hot side, which is perfect for this large displacement motor. The turbo is sized to offer as much as a thousand horsepower from this fairly inexpensive turbo from Summit Racing. We also ran it with a Procharger air to water intercooler. We had already installed when we started this a set of 80 pound Excel. Uh, fuel injectors so that we had enough fuel not only to supply the turbo combination but also the turbo combination and we were running E85 which takes even more fuel. We had a pair of turbo smart wastegates set at seven pounds. We obviously could make a little bit less than that. Um, set it with seven pound springs on them. We had uh, the race port blow off valve. The turbo setup was fairly simple. It was run with a set of tubular headers made by Jason over at JT Fab, and they face forward. We made a Y pipe basically, and the Y pipe was configured to include both of the Turbo Smart wastegates, and it ended in a three inch V band. And we were able to then adapt from that for a three inch V band to a T6 in this case for our T6 S475. We could also use a T4 because we have an adapter that goes from the three inch V band to a T4 and a three inch V band to a T3. Although a T3 obviously would not be a good choice for this big of a motor, but run with six pounds, it made 617 horsepower and 806 foot pounds of torque. So you can see adding just a little bit of boost made a major change in the power and a massive amount of torque over 800 foot pounds of torque. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we added even more boost. Okay guys, we've taken a look at what happened when we ran our 8.1 liter big block Chevy, both naturally aspirated and here it was with the headers. And then we ran it at six pounds of boost. 
with our S475 turbo from Summit Racing. Now let's see what happened when we <laughs> turn the boost up a little bit because we did run into a little bit of problem but this will illustrate what happens when we go up at least a little bit in boost and, and how much potential there's definitely going to be if you were to run, let's say, a lot of boost on this combination. So this was our combination. We made 424 horsepower and 554 foot-pounds of torque when it was NA with the headers. At six pounds or so, it made 617 horsepower and 806 foot-pounds of torque, yes. And then here's what happened when we turned the boost up a little bit. We put a, a manual wastegate controller on it. And you can see the boost went up. Uh, we went up to, it, went, it ranged from 6.7 to 7.1 PSI, so not very much in terms of... Um, you know, it wasn't really a big change in boost, less than a full pound, but the peak power went up to 638 horsepower and 848 foot-pounds of torque. You can see got a, got a big jump in torque there. And that's what happens when we go up and boost. You'll see, I mean, this is a massive amount of torque. This thing was over 800 foot-pounds below 3,000 RPM. So obviously... <laughs> If you're looking to uh, spin the tires or maybe climb up the side of a building or something, this has the kind of torque to do that. And really at just seven pounds of boost, which is which is pretty impressive. So seven pounds of boost with E85 and a decent air to water intercooler. And this turbo, remember, this turbo is only, you know, a little past halfway to its potential flow point because this thing is a thousand horsepower turbo. So it could make a ton more power with this. And I'm excited about maybe running it later on after we do some NA changes, maybe improving the intake, definitely a camshaft, you know, ported heads, all those things, they're gonna prove the power output of this thing, not necessarily the torque out, but it probably will do that as well. But we have enough turbo if later on we wanna put the turbo on an even more powerful NA combination. But here's what happened when we made our final run, and this is kind of what stopped the testing, we were able to fix it, but here's what happened when we went up a little bit more in boost, and you can see the power went up uh, again, uh, went up to 664 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 878 foot-pounds. So we're just, you know, just a little bit more boost. In fact, we went from uh, about 7.1 pounds to 7.8 pounds. So seven tenths of a pound, hardly any at all. Picked up quite a bit of power and again, an awful lot of torque, which is exactly what boost does. So we're still less than eight pounds of boost here, but you can see the big fall off out here at the end, just climbing right through my face there in the, in the video. Um, what happened was uh, we had a rod end on the load cell break on the dyno, but I didn't figure that out until we started looking at, I thought obviously something broke on the motor. So we checked everything. We checked spark plugs and wires and did a compression test and we're looking for, you know, broken valves and springs and just all kinds of things to figure out why this thing plummeted so bad. It turned out that it was uh, just a thing that, uh, just a rod end that, that happened on the load cell in the dyno. We eventually fixed it. it repeated perfectly and and all started working unfortunately i'd run out of time to do more testing with this but it shows already what boost does what i want to do now is let's take a look at the boost curves on these three things and you can kind of see what's going on and why we're gaining more and more power now that we take a look at the different uh, power outputs at the different boost levels, let's take a look at the boost curves on each one of these. This was our first run, roughly a peak of 6.2 pounds. It had a low point of about 5.5 or 5.6 PSI. And this was the curve. This was no electronic controller. But as we'll see, as we go up in boost, you'll see that the that this looks like it's... Um, uh, the boost curve is actually moving around a little bit, but you're talking about a difference here of six tenths of a pound. So the, <laughs> it's just because of the scale more than anything else. And this is what happened when we went up to uh, just over seven pounds. You can see here again, it, now it's starting to look a little flatter because of the scale, because we have more that we're showing there. And this was what happened when we um, did our last final turn and then the rod end broke on the load cell. But again, the curves are actually fairly flat there. Even with no boost controller, we just had a manual controller on it. Boost curves look good. And this is a this is a nice curve. Um, it's, it's definitely flat enough. We're, we're seeing all the boost down low where we're loading this thing in. And it's making, you know, 850 plus foot pounds of torque. So all this worked out really well. But what I wanted to show you also is boost pressure versus back pressure because we also logged the back pressure on this. So we'll take our seven PSI run here. 
get our boost, get our back pressure, and we'll show you both of those. So you can see the boost pressure is the flat curve going across. I'll go ahead and label that so you can see that, and then I'll also label the back pressure. But the back pressure is a slightly rising curve compared to the boost pressure. Down below 3,800 RPM, we actually had less back pressure than boost pressure. Only above 3,800 was there slightly more back pressure than boost pressure. This turbo, as I said, was a T6 S475, so it was sized well for this combination, and it shows that in the back pressure. Even at 6.9 PSI, we only had 8.9 PSI of back pressure. So we only had two pounds more back pressure than boost pressure. And on some applications, it might be double or triple the back pressure compared to boost pressure. Those will be small turbos, factory ones, very, very responsive where you're trying to max the turbo out basically. And on some applications, like with my Bonneville car, we had less back pressure than boost pressure because we weren't really concerned with response rate. We just tried to maximize the power output. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did we learn from this little adventure? Adding a big S475 turbo to our also big Gen 7 8.1 liter big block Chevy. Well, we learned the following things. First of all, an LS motor from the wrecking yard is not the only candidate that you can add boost to. In fact, I would argue that you can add that to basically any motor from the wrecking yard, including our 8.1 liter big block Chevy. And it also goes to show you what happens when you do add boost to it. Now, it would be nice if this thing had a cam and ported heads and a different intake. Take, but adding boost to even a stock motor adds impressive power. I mean, we went from 424 horsepower to 638 horsepower, just seven pounds of boost. And what happened was this motor already made massive amount of torque. It made near 550 foot pounds of torque, and that jumped up to around 850 foot pounds of torque with just a little bit, meaning about seven pounds of boost. And that's exactly what boost does. It's just a multiplier of what's already there. So if you've got a massive torque producing big motor, it's going to have even more massive torque production. And that's exactly what happened here. So if you're looking for massive torque because you want to like race or you just want to spin the tires at will, a turbocharged big block like this 8.1 liter Gen 7 is the way to go. Armature holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all this stuff. I'll keep testing.